All right. Uh, yeah, I'm back to that. <laughs> Doesn't work anymore, that pilot. So, good wind, good angle. Can't get a break. <laughs> I, yesterday I had good wind, not a good angle, and an autopilot. Today I got good wind, good angle, good pilot. So I'm smoking now, I'm doing 7.5 close to 8 knots, I think I'm really going fast, the waves are big, I'm surfing them, it's awesome, uh, but early this morning the autopilot stopped working again, so you never know, it might come back, it might not, uh, I hope it does come back, give me a break, another break, really helped the last 3 or 4 days that I had it, uh, but now I'm back without one, so I have to do another grindy day of trying to make this stuff happen. Um, I opened up all of my cockpit table where all of the network cables for the autopilot control are going. It's kind of a job to do, it's not, I'm not passionate about that, let's say. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, I'm sure now that it's not any of the cables that we changed in Vallarta. Uh, it has to be either, like my two sensors, my, my uh, Depth gauge and my wind meters are not op operating normally. Like the wind gauge has been not giving me a, a, a wind indication for quite some time. And the depth gauge, when it does work, it gives me only the, the depth, it doesn't give me the water speed. So those two sensors could be sending bad signals to the network. That's a possibility. I think it's more likely that the, the long cable that goes from the cockpit table and goes to connect to the EMA 2000 backbone is, is broken. So I opened out all that and I actually would see where that wire is going now. Like I know where it's going. But it's just a, like it's a 15 foot, 20 foot cable. Uh, and I don't have that on board, so even if I wanted to change it to try to debug the system a bit further, uh, I can get to it. Uh, I mean, it's quite a job because it, it goes into the cable. Like, I mean, it's not a big deal to fish it because it's kind of accessible. It's not so horribly inaccessible. But, um, yeah, I, I just don't have the cable, so, uh, so that's that. Um, so hopefully the gremlins quit. I can use the pilot a little bit, a, a bit more. Uh, the weather is perfect right now. Like I say, I got I got some super good angle. I'm making it southwest. I'm close to the ITCZ now. Um, knocked off a good amount of miles in a relaxed mode with when the other pilot was there, but now I don't have it anymore. Uh, again, I can't fault Garmin for this. Like all, all of that kid is 10 years old, so it's all me. Like, you know, 10 year old marine electronic, you gotta expect that it's, it, it can't work forever. Uh, and uh, it should, uh, like I feel like just pulling all these cables away and all these sensors and just starting a new, doing it like a fresh system, because I mean, kind of, they're about to cross the ocean, you wanna know that that stuff's gonna work. There's always the hand steering back up. I should have two of those, but now I'm back one, so it's gonna be, I don't know, around six thousand dollars to buy all that kit, depending on what I put exactly, and how I how I set it up. Now the Vesper Cortex is gonna help now because it gives me a Wi-Fi, so I, at least I'm not buying another chart plotter. Uh, so I guess it's a, a new instrument pack that's 1700 US off of West Marine, I think, and uh, and uh, a new autopilot. So that should be 2700. So that's in the US. I'm saying six and whatever cable key connectors that I don't have that I'll have to fly with all that so that it, it works and performs the job it does. At least I got some sun. Yesterday I didn't have much sun so I had to, to run the diesel for a bit, about an hour, just to keep my, my battery stuff up. Uh, I could have low shed in Starlink also, but it's good to run the diesel once a week, just get, get all the batteries uh, in the field. That's where I'm at, still uh, enjoying the city. <laughs> it's awesome. You guys have a good day.